Well, it's good to see you with something that has a back in it. You ready to go? Yeah, I just have a couple more things to pack up. Uh, Bill, sorry you couldn't come, but I had to leave somebody mine in the store. It's all right, I understand. Yeah, also, uh, Olivia was there at uh, 7 a.m. She was looking for uh, somebody who might be in their office at that time of day that she could call. I hope you don't mind having clients that are in England. Is there something going on I should know about? No. Oh. Well, is there something going on I'd find interesting? It's not funny, Billy. <laughs> I see. We've, we've had a little spat, have we? Yeah, we had a little fight. It's no big deal. Here. You know, mm -hmm. Olivia blew up, but it didn't take me long to get to the same place. Mm -hmm. Is it about our favorite subject? Yeah. Oh. Olivia's convinced that uh, Riva's only motivation in any situation is to get between me and Olivia, you know? And that I just uh, fall for it because I haven't gotten over Riva yet. Is that a question? Well, not in this case, no. This is not some mind game that Reva's playing. This is real. A man lost his life to save mine. Reva's trying to make that right. That's who she is. Well, I know that. It used to be you knew that without having to be told. Yeah. Well, I think that's why I got out so upset, because I'm starting to... I was starting to look at Reva the way Olivia does. Yeah, don't get me wrong here, Josh. I mean, Reva isn't above some tricks if she wants them bad. I know that, but not in this case. No. Not in this case, most definitely. Yeah, and see, I can tell the difference. That's the thing. Same way I can tell when Olivia's trying to manipulate me into something. I mean, why is it that all the women in my life think that I'm not smart enough to come in out of the rain? Do I just... Do I just look that stupid? <laughs> <laughs> don't give me an opening like that. Oh, don't, don't <laughs> make We're driving a truck in it. <laughs> Here, get this stuff. Oh. The scriptures tell us there is no greater gift, no greater act of love than for one man to lay down his life for another. Diego Alcantara's life and death is living scripture. For he gave his life for a man he didn't know. Joshua Lewis was a stranger to him. They didn't even speak the same language. Their lives were as far apart as two worlds can be. One man lived in comfort, safe in the security of his home, never knowing hunger or deprivation. The other man was so poor, so desperate for a better life in this country that he took hard and dangerous work just to feed his family. Diego Alcantara could have looked at Josh Lewis and seen everything in his life that he didn't have, everything that oppressed him. But that wouldn't be fair to say, as those of us who know Josh would tell you. But nobody who knew Diego or the life that he led would have blamed him either. He could have easily looked at Josh as a symbol of his oppression, but he didn't. Instead, he saw a man in trouble, and he didn't hesitate to dive into the rubble of that building and save that man's life. Joshua, Diego Alcantara gave you the greatest gift of all, the gift of life. But he also gave us a gift. He gave us an example of a good life. A good life, nobly led, and a noble death. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Spirit. Amen. Dios te salve, Maria. Llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres, y bendita es la fruta de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Would anyone else like to say a few words? Ah, uh, yeah, I would. Ramona, that was Diego's wife, and his last words were for her. But she never got to hear them because I can't find her. But I will, because I made a promise to Diego before he died, and it's a promise I intend to keep. Seems like a pitiful enough trade for the things that Diego did for me and for Joshua and for our children. 
And I hope that now that you're sitting here, it'll be easier for you to understand exactly what it was that Diego gave all of us. Your father's alive. And he's gonna get to see you graduate from high school. He's gonna get to see you be married. And he's gonna be there for you, for all the things, whether they're big or small, that happened to you in your life. because Diego gave up all those things for himself. He will never see his wife again. Or his kids, if he has any. And we truly can never repay him for that gift. But there is something that we can do, something I think we all must do, and that is to be open ourselves to be courageous the way this man was, to be generous the way this man was, and to step up when we have the chance to help someone. Because the chance, the chance is, is that when that opportunity comes to us, it's going to be at a really bad time in our lives, you know? We're going to be too busy, or we're going to be tired and cranky, and we're going to be able to think of a hundred really good reasons why we won't want to be bothered. But I hope that it's that time that you and that I and that all of us will remember this man. It wasn't convenient for Diego to die when he did, or the way that he did. And chances are that when we have the opportunity ourselves to do something for someone else, it'll seem pretty measly to what Diego did for us. But please, I ask that we take the time and we take the trouble because it seems pretty small down payment on the debt that we owe to Diego El Quintero.